Punk Revolution now. Today we're going to be reviewing Turnstile's newest record, Glow On. Glow on what? Your bungus? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. So, Turnstile, they are a band that I've really enjoyed since 2018 when they released their album Time and Space. I thought that was just a really fun record. I was so excited by the way they were able to maintain and keep the energy of New York hardcore alive. Because New York hardcore, it's such a cool genre. It's both simultaneously, you know, fast and aggressive and kind of macho. Maybe sometimes bringing in a little metalcore influence in the hardcore. But they also, it's also, you know, very fun and kind of playful, like group chant. We're all together. I don't know kind of cheesy in a way It's a fun genre and the fact that turnstile was continuing to execute this genre so well in 2018 was I thought that was a pretty cool thing that they were doing I've been interested to see what they're gonna be doing in this next record I have to admit the singles off this record I was a little concerned about because turnstile they've already been a pretty accessible hardcore band But this the singles off this new record were particularly with the way it was produced and and the hooks and stuff felt pretty poppy So I was a little nervous that they were gonna to go into a direction that was a little too poppy for my taste. So let's see what's going on. Let's start by taking a look at the album cover. I do think this is a pretty pleasant album cover. I like the just how soft everything looks, the clouds and everything. But you gotta admit, like, this does not look like album artwork for a hardcore record. Again, kind of feeding into my concerns, like, maybe they're gonna get a little too poppy here. I don't know, this might be a freaking dream pop sort of album cover. Or maybe they're kind of doing something like how Def Heaven had that pink album cover for Sunbather, even though they were metal, kind of, uh, you know, playing with their brains a little bit. That's kind of interesting. I am intrigued, a little nervous, but let's start by talking about the the frickin' music. Listening through this record for the first time, it was totally undeniable that there, there is certainly is more poppy and accessible things coming through in this album. The production was just so pristine, and, and I mean, it sounds great, but yeah, I, I personally prefer hardcore that's kind of rough around the edges, and this is a record that the production is just, it's fantastic in a way that maybe I don't want it to be fantastic and the hooks also just super freaking catchy like hook, like these some of these songs you can freaking like dance to we got some slower songs in here that definitely bring in more like alternative rock like th these are a bunch of things that when I hear as someone who loves hardcore I'm like whoa 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 this is getting a little too a little too accessible for the masses I prefer my hardcore nice and unaccessible for us wacko nutsos to enjoy while everyone else is scared of us because we're crazy I'm gonna be honest though after listening to this record a couple times, like, I realized I was going through my day and, like, I was having these songs stuck in my fucking head. Like, I was like, god damn, I want to go back and listen to these fucking songs. The way they, I mean, the hooks are just so, the rhythm is so freaking fantastic. It's like, the, the way the, the, da, 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 like, it's gonna get stuck in your head. And then also they got this really cool th thing going on in the percussion too. The percussion, they sometimes like will augment it with like a, like a like additional percussion that might actually be like electronic drums or something like that. That just kind of adds like a more like dancey feel to it, which is like also really weird. And they've got slower songs like Alien Love Call that even though, you know, a little nervous about putting some slower alternative rock songs in a hardcore record, the bottom line is, is it's ex executed well, it's freaking catchy, everything sounds freaking great. And, you know, I'm just sitting with the reality here is, you know, maybe it's a little too Disney Channel accessible for my taste usually, but just objectively, like, this album is executed really well. And not only in the sense that it's fun and catchy and just a total pleasure to listen to from start to finish, but also, like, objectively, there's some real innovation going on here. They're doing some stuff I don't think I've ever heard a punk band really do. Blending together New York hardcore with ultimately what I want to call power pop. Like, if you listen to some of these guitars chugging away in the kind of slower moments, sometimes they do feel a little bit like freaking like Blue Album Weezer. We got these awesome quieter verses and then loud choruses in a very Weezer way. It's definitely very alternative rock 90s influence, but still fundamentally driven by, you know, guitars that are super freaking massive and thick and fuzzy. Just sound freaking great, even if it's not the rough around the edges hardcore. It sounds freaking great. It seems like they were taking a lot of risks throughout this record and every single one they took pretty much paid off. Like, slowing down with these alternative rock songs, like I said, sounds great. Add some dynamics, add some diversity through the record. The hooks are so fucking catchy. I've gotten, like, every single one of these songs stuck in my head. And it still scratches that itch of, like, okay, here we fucking go. We got this heavy breakdown here. It's, I mean, that's just, like, I mean, on, New York hardcore, even though it's supposed to be a real tough genre, this album isn't super tough, but it's, it's, it's really fucking fun the way that New York hardcore is supposed to be. 
beyond just being really fun, I mean, they're, they're also a band that really you can tell pay attention to the details, every single little transition from one part of the song to another, and they have these kind of like maybe rhythmic breaks in, in the song to kind of spice things up a little bit. Like, this is a band that really, I mean, we've seen from their previous albums, they're really talented, and they're continuing that, and they really focused on the details. Lots of little sound effects and sounds, and like I said, augmented percussion throughout the album to kind of spice things up. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a great album. It does remind me a little bit of Origami Angel in the same way that Origami Origami Angel, their music is often very, very poppy, very, very catchy, very, very sing-along fun, but like it still gets, has plenty of like really heavy moments in it, like some metalcore influence. I call it Disney Channel Hardcore, which sounds definitely kind of condescending, but trust me, like, if Disney, if Disney Channel Hardcore can be ex executed to its very best, then this album is it. My only complaints are I feel like the lyrics aren't very profound. I feel like having a little bit more mature and complex and interesting lyrics could have made this album a little bit better, but overall the lyrics aren't bad by any means. They're perfectly good and fun. And I do feel like the hardest hitting tracks are the, the catchiest and most exciting are mostly in the first half. The second half is still good, but I, I, I think the first half is just a little bit better than the second half. So that's, those are my only two complaints really. So overall, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. Just really well executed, really freaking catchy, really enjoyable to listen to, and, and innovative. Like, what more can you ask it for? It deserves a high rating. I think it deserves a 9 out of 10. It's, I mean, I, I love listening to it. If you are not a fan of hardcore, you should still check this out because it's actually that catchy and that fun. This might be the first, you know, hardcore record you, you might want to check out to help you kind of ease into the genre because it's undeniably fun, and maybe you'll start to kind of get the appeal of the heavy metalcore breakdowns and be able to uh, enjoy, you know, other hardcore records. And if you're someone who already does love hardcore, Hardcore, I recommend listening to it with an open mind. There's plenty, there's gonna be, pl I promise you, there's gonna be plenty of hardcore fans who listen to this and don't like it because it's too poppy. That was my first impression, but I just kind of had to sit with it. And at some point, I had to admit my, to myself, fuck, it's fucking really good. Okay, so it's it's good. Listen to it with an open mind. Turnstile's killing it right now. I exceeded my expectations. Like I said, the singles I was a little disappointed by, but goes to show. You know, there's, oh, I, it happens all the time. I listen to a single, and then the album comes out, and I think the album is fucking great, even if I didn't love the single. So, that's all I gotta say, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Shout out to Turnstile for releasing one of the best punk rock records of the year. Like, comment, subscribe if you want more videos, because it helps my channel grow. Punk Revolution Now.